Hey everyone, it's Strange Michael. I hope you're doing well today. I have a review here for more of a horror documentary than anything. This film here is called The Found Footage Phenomenon. It came out in 2021. It's a Shutter exclusive. And I had heard a lot of negative things about this. It seems like a lot of people like myself who are big on found footage movies and still are. It seemed like a lot of people were kind of negative towards this, that were in the community. And I watched it and I was hoping for a lot better. And then I see what people are talking about. <laughs> immediately. Uh, this is a, an interview set, a documentary focused around people who directed different found footage films, especially big important stuff like the McPherson tapes, Blair Witch, Eduardo Sanchez is in this. Uh, then you have shit like found footage 3D, the director of that is here. I recently saw that <clears throat> for the first time and found footage 3D was one of the worst movies I've seen in a long time. It sucked. Yeah, it's well shot for the most part, but like the CGI effects, no. No. The director of Hate Crime is in here. I don't know anything about him, but that movie looks like trash. I don't care what anybody says. It's not an excuse. It looks like trash. Uh, let's see. Who else was in here? You had a lot of, like, film historians. Who gives a shit? Uh, you have Patrick Bryce, who directed Creep, which I haven't seen Creep and Creep 2, so I don't know if those are any good. Um, you had Derek Lee, who directed Afflicted. I haven't seen that yet either. Um... Andre something, I don't know how to say his name, he directed Troll Hunter, which a lot of people love. I still haven't seen that myself. Uh, Megan is Missing's director, Michael Goy, is in this. Uh, Ghost Watch, Stephen Volk, I don't know about that movie. Might be good. Uh, the Last Broadcast director, Stephen, is it Stephen Avalos? I think he directed that, is what it says. Uh, he's here, Lance Weller is here, or Wheeler, who also did The Last Broadcast. Uh, the found footage 3D guy, like I said. The guy who directed Jerusalem, which looks like total shit. I've heard good things and I've heard bad things about that, but he's here as well. Uh, so is Doran Paz, I guess, who was the co-director of that. Charman's director, which is Kip Tribble. Anyway, there's a lot of folks here that have been involved. Rob Savage, for example, who I really enjoyed. I just reviewed his movie, The Host, or Host, excuse me. There's The Host, which is not his movie, and then there's Host on Shudder, which is his movie. Um, there's a lot of people involved here that made some really, really solid stuff. And then there's mostly people who just kind of suck. But it's not even about that for me. It kind of covers the history of found footage and how we went from something like um, Cannibal Holocaust to what we did with Blair Witch to Last Broadcast, which are kind of back-to-back. And then so on and so on, all the way into nowadays in 2022. Or 2021, I guess, when the documentary came out. That was fun. The interviews are shot well. Uh, Eduardo Sanchez has all the Star Wars toys behind him and everything in his little interview set. <clears throat> but they didn't really delve into the flaws of these things. It almost felt like a summary of each of the movies. Like, not like a massive, like, spoiler thing, but it felt like a, like a teaser trailer for each of these movies and the director's projects there, which I think is kind of lame. Uh, Found Footage 3D being the worst example of one, probably hate crime as well. Um, I'd never even heard of hate crime until about a year ago, and uh, people acted like in this movie like it was some big important event. Like people actually knew about this, like it was a like it was a new, I don't know, like a new Friday the Thirteenth sequel or something. It, it just it feels like such a a disingenuous film to me as a documentary, if you want to call it that. It feels more like a teaser trailer to me of all these different movies and stuff that people want you to check out with these directors' projects. And I think there are people like Eduardo Sanchez that uh, he genuinely has talent. I really do believe that. But when I see all these other people, most of them, not all of them, I'm like, why are they here? Why are these people doing interviews? Why do you have film scholars doing this shit? I'm also watching another documentary from Shudder called The 101 Scariest Movie Moments of All Time or something like that. And that shit's a great example, too, of hipsterella types who want to do these lists, and they, they just, they have no talent, and most of the people involved there that are doing interviews are not people that I care about. You have, like, five people that I care about in that entire uh, show that are doing those interviews on those countdowns, and uh, it's not like the old Bravo one from back in the day, and when I review this, I'll kind of cover that, too. But this film historian commenting on a, on a movie series or, or a movie subgenre or anything, it, it just, it's lame. Let's stop doing that. Anyway, the interviews are shot well, the movie footage utilized, the editing and all that, it's fine. I really don't have much to say about it. How do you really even review a documentary aside from talking about the contents within it? Not so much the look of it or the acting capability, you can't really do that. How do you really talk about them? Well, it has to be about the content. Is the movie boring? Yeah, this documentary is kind of dull and as a big found footage fan, 
I'm really let down with it. I wanted to hear more behind the scenes stories of how they did this, how did they do this, especially with Blair Witch and like the McPherson tapes and uh, even down to found footage 3D, why did they choose to go CGI over top of practical or whatever. I would have been way more interested in something like that. They kind of did a little bit of that with last broadcast and a little bit slimmer with Blair Witch, but really not much of anything. Um, it's not really a making of appreciative type thing. If it had been three hours, maybe they had went to that, but I don't think I could have made it through that because for an hour and 40 minutes, God, it was dull. Anyway, when it comes to this 2021 movie, the found footage phenomenon, there's really not much to it. The music is solid, by the way. I forgot to mention that on my list that I'm looking at right here. There's really not much to it. It's about as dull as it gets, but it's above average. Well, not above average. It's right at average, but it's like, I can't give it like a like a slanderous, like, this is crap, don't watch it type of thing. If you feel as dedicated, excuse me, as dedicated to found footage as somebody like myself does, who really loves it and appreciates it a lot, uh, this documentary is going to let you down. If you're somebody who doesn't care about found footage, you're not going to care about this documentary. So I can't really recommend it to anybody, frankly. But for what it was, the way it's made, I'd give it like a 3 out of 5 stars on my ranking, or rating. And uh, it's... Just miss this one. Don't, don't watch this. If you're going to have a Shutter account, or if you already do, don't watch it. It's really not worth your time. You're just going to be disappointed, man. Anyway, what did you think about the... Let me get the title again, because I'm, I'm already deleting this from my brain. The Found Footage Phenomenon. What did you think about this movie? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you think it's one of the best documentaries you've ever seen, or one of the worst? I'd love to hear all that down below, too. Thank you guys for watching. God bless you all. Three out of five stars, like I said. Goodbye.